Okay, so we've just entered Pronunciation Doctor channel, and uh, if you want to search for intonation from Pronunciation Doctor, you make sure you put the term within the box that says uh, search channel. So if you put it in the one that says YouTube here, you'll get intonation from everywhere on YouTube. If you put it up here in the Google bar, then you'll get everywhere on, in, on the internet. So if you want to narrow your search, so it's only within uh, my channel, then you can put, uh, put it in the search channel and click here, and then you'll come up with a number of videos where I have tagged them as intonation. So a lot of different things on intonation. Okay, so it's possible for you to, to search that way as well. So again, I'll go back and show you, you can go by playlists. So that means I've organized the videos in certain playlists according to themes or, or a course material. And um, uh, the ones where I do a presentation and the ones where I uh, video recorded student work. Oops, got a little error there. Not happy. Let's try that again. Let's see, playlists. Maybe that button's not working. Let's try another way. There's always a different door to go through. Okay, let's try going. to channel and then there. Okay, it's taking a long time to load. So while it's doing its thing there, I would like to show you um, about, I want to teach you how to use connected speech. All right, so I'm going to teach you how to use connected speech, but I'm going to run through this summary here. You have a PDF of this uh, PowerPoint presentation in the getting folder the getting started folder. So on Angel, in lessons, in the getting started folder, there's a PDF of my presentation called how to use connected speech online. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use it and then I'll take you to the software itself and we'll do a few things with it. So uh, one of the ways you can go is by going to Angel Resources, the tab, and from that tab you're going to go down to useful links and you'll see the shortcut to connected speech online. That's one of the ways you can get there. Another way is for you to type letter by letter www.clarityenglish.com because this is on a server outside of the country, somewhere else in the world. I think it's in Hong Kong. But we access it, so I'm just giving you a shortcut to it. So you can get it. And when you do there, when you get to that, you need to log in with your username and password, and you'll see the welcome on the right side. So this student called Terry Yang, student, this is Mission College. Now, you may log in after you've paid your license fee and your name has been registered. So Terry will probably send you an email to say it's ready to go, okay? And then you can do that, what I'm showing you right now. Um, going too fast here, okay. So um, after you get in, you'll see Start Connected Speech. Now, this particular company has different programs. You're the, doing the one that's called Connected Speech. You're going to press the Start button, and then you'll get this. Uh, it'll come up in a new window, in a new window, and it'll give you uh, some options. This software has three levels, level one, level two, and level three. For my class, I'd like most of you, I'd like you to, to concentrate on level three for advanced. If you're a beginner, well, if somebody in your family is a beginner, you have the option to use everything you want. So you can start at the beginning if you want. But I'll do assignments from level two to get yourself, you know, just to get you up to speed, and then level three we'll concentrate on. Now you, you click on a level first, and then you'll choose a person to start. So you'll see there, there are nine people here, and I'll assign, you know, certain speakers and topics for your, your homework. And you, as I said, you're welcome to use any and all of the levels and lessons during your, your license period. So, for example, if we decide we're going to do level two and we choose the man called Alan, then we will get his video and we want to play the video first. I recommend you play it first without reading the text so that you are challenging your ears and not your eyes. Okay? If you want to, you can play the video with the text and the text will show up in the box below and you can read along as you see the words. Um, there are some words that are in blue. They're called hot words. 
and they will link you to a definition, explanation, or illustration of that word or term. Then it'll ask you to choose a module to work on from the activity list. So the modules are going to be on the right side under the, under the word activity. I will give you some assignments. Doesn't mean, that does not mean you can't do the other ones, but I want you to be sure to hit on the ones that I choose. So among the activities you can choose are language, pause groups, pause groups means as I'm pausing in between the groups or words as I'm talking like that. So those are pause groups. Now in, in my book called Phrase by Phrase, we call phrases. So I use this title phrase by phrase because I'm trying to get you to speak in groups of words that are phrases, a little pause, and another phrase. This software has the same concept, but instead of looking at the phrase, they're calling it pause groups. Okay? So sometimes, just like when you're looking at your grammar book, they will say, this is the present continuous. And other grammar books will say, this is the present progressive. So these are the same concept, just different terms. Um, another section will be on stress, which is the same as in phrase by phrase, meaning the word is longer and stronger and higher than the other words or syllables. Pitch change. By pitch change, we mean la, 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 These are changes in pitch. So we can also think of it as intonation patterns. All right, so pitch, intonation, will refer us to the change up and down of the pitch or the tone of, of, your, of your oral speech. Uh, linking, linking means joining words together so that if you speak like this, it sounds really odd because all of the syllables are separate. That sounds very painful. So we want to speak like this, so we're linking all the syllables to each other and we're linking words together. All right, so that's something at advanced level certainly need to work on in order to modify your accent. So there'll be some exercises for linking. And I'm just going to tell you in advance, it's a little bit hard because this is one of those things you can't see. It's not like consonants and vowels. So don't be frustrated if you try this and it has, you have to do it more than once. Uh, sounds, those are the easier ones because they're, we're talking about consonant sounds and vowel sounds, so they're very segmental and individual sounds. So there'll be some times when I ask you to do those and then uh, syllables, like counting out the syllable, with how many syllables does a word have? Those are different uh, aspects under activities. Now, here's something important. When you're using the software, there are two modes. One is called the learn mode, and the other one is called the test mode. And you can see these two icons. Pay attention to them. Because when you're in them, you'll do different things. Learn mode allows you to practice unlimited number of times. And whenever you get something right, it'll be green. And if it's a mistake, it'll turn red. And all you have to do is click the red one and try again. Okay, so it'll, a mistake will be pointed out to you. It's red. You just click it and say, I want to do it again. Okay? Um, you have three attempts to get the correct answer. But if you miss it that many times, then the software will tell you the answer. So you don't feel frustrated. So if you get it wrong, 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 it'll tell you the answer. Otherwise, you just get the wrong answer, and then you try it again until you hope you get it right. Okay? So that is... The, the learn mode, all right? So the, the, right, the right word or, or whatever the answer is will be shown to you if you can't get it within three tries. Now, you don't get any score uh, in the learn mode, but the time you spend on it is recorded. So the time you spend in the software is always recorded on the time clock. And you can see it and I can see it. So I know whether you spent 16 seconds on something or 16 minutes or 16 hours on something. We all know that because some, some computer is taking note of that and keeping track of it. Now, what's the difference about test mode? Test mode gives you one attempt per item. So you can practice, 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 and you maybe have 15 items, but when you get the test mode, it'll just randomly select 10, 10 items. You have only one chance. You either get it right or wrong. So I recommend that you practice before you test. And then how many times you practice is up to you. Question? Then you get a zero. I mean, your score will come up. Okay, so whatever score you get in test is what score gets into the grade book. Yes. Okay, I'll show you once we get into the software. So I'm trying to give you the concepts first. 
and then I'll get you into the software. I'm not on the software yet. I'm, this is just my PowerPoint. So I'll, I'll get to that. But just so you understand the concept that there's a, a learn mode, allows you to do a lot of stuff and practice as much as you want, and then test mode, which is more limited. So after you practice in the learn mode, then you should do the exercise in the test mode. And the score for the test mode is visible in the instructor's screen and also in your own progress report. You'll be able to see that. You may take a test on limited time. So yes, you can take it more than once. Okay. The average, okay, so um, now in the language model module, in the language module, there are different types of activities. These are some of them. In one of the modules, they'll ask you questions about the passage. The speaker gave a two minute speech, then it'll ask some questions, there'll be multiple choice, um, drag and drop. Sometimes it'll ask you to put the best answer in the, in the box. Um, I don't expect you to read, I'm just showing you, you know, screenshots of what it looks like. Close exercises, C-L-O-Z-E. This word close means fill in the gap. Fill in the blank, one word per gap. Now there are two different types. The close where you look at the words and then you drag them into the box where they belong. Then there's a listening close where you listen, you play the recording and you drag a word into the box. Okay, so one is based on writing and the other one is based on listening. There's also one for spelling. Spelling is usually just one word at a time. How do you spell the word? You listen to it, then you spell it. Then there's dictation, and dictation is you listen to a whole passage, a whole paragraph, in short parts. They'll give you a bunch of different you know, parts of sentences that you listen to, and then you type it into the box. Now, the dictation, please note, this is the one, the only one kind of exercise that doesn't have learn and test modes that give you a grade. The other ones, the test mode will give you a grade. This one, it doesn't give you a grade. So I ask you to take a screenshot of it and then send it to me. I don't know how come the software doesn't do that, but it doesn't. Do you know how to take a screenshot? Okay, if you're using a PC, you should have a print screen button. Take a look on your keyboard. There should be a print screen button on your keyboard. Any of you use a Mac? Do you know how to, do you know how to, do you know how to take a screenshot? You do? How do you do that? Shift Command 4, right? Okay, good. All right, so as long as you know how to make a screenshot, you can send that to me, and that will be the way I know that you've done it. Pause groups. Mark and record. So what you're going to do is you're going to listen to the video, and then you're going to click between each phrase group. And there'll be a number of, of, of check marks. If there are three check marks, then it means find three pauses. If you are six check marks, that means find six pauses. And you just put your mouse there and click, and that's where the pauses are. And then at the end, when you click, you know, you're going to go check your answers, it'll either show you green or red. Green if it's right, red if it's wrong. If it's wrong, you just try it again in, in your practice mode. The second part of it is to record your voice. So after you've listened to it a few times and identified the places where you need to where the speaker paused, you'll be asked to record your voice. So there's a recorder right in the screen. You just click on it and record your voice and play it back and compare yours to the model. There's another section called I Count and Identify, and it asks you to count, listen to something, count the number of pause groups, and then mark them. Number groups, sometimes they ask you to listen and type the numbers in the box and there'll be numbers with many digits. Well, at the advanced level anyway. And every time, and no matter what, where you are in the software, there is something called the tutorial, and the tutorial will bring up a lot of text information about a particular topic. In the, in the category of stress, there's mark and record. Again, you're gonna play the video, and usually what happens is you, you'll, you'll hear the video of the speaker, that you heard at the very beginning, but it'll be in, in, in increments, you know, one segment per screen. So you play this video, and then you're gonna click the stressed word in each one of the pause groups. So you're trying to enhance your ability to hear different aspects of the language. So we analyze them in these small parts, because there's so much going on when people speak to you, you can't possibly focus on all of them at once. So we're trying to help you focus on one element at a time, each exercise. This one focuses on stress, 
the last one focuses on syllable, another one focuses on, on pitch change or intonation. So that's how this software is, is structured. In another example, on structure words, it'll ask you to click the structure word or words that the second speaker would stress. So that means there's some sort of a dialogue, you hear it, and you're Oh, you're paying attention to which word is stressed and then you figure out well if I say that's not my book then maybe the next speaker say no it's his and you'll choose the right sentence that matches for the conversation and you'll know that by hearing it you won't know it just by looking at the sentence because it's, a, it's not my book you don't know which one it is stress so it's not my book it's not my book maybe you need to choose something like no it's my pen so you'll be sensitizing yourself to where the stressed word is and then figure out which things match to it. In the section on correction, there'll be, um, you'll again listen to something and click on a word that the second speaker would stress when they respond. And again, when you see these on the screen, it'll be more evident. These are just small screenshots that you can't see that clearly, but I'm just trying to give you an overview. For pitch change, as I told you before, pitch change is related to intonation. So again, you're going to listen to the, the speaker in this, the short segments, and you're to mark and record where you hear a pitch change. So do you hear, for right now I'm teaching, I know there's no pitch change at all, I'm speaking on a monotone, and my pitch is not going up and it's not going down, but right now, if I change it, go, hello, up, up, hello, hello. That's where it's a pitch change, right? If I go, hello, 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 there's a pitch change. One of them was rising and the other one was falling. So this was to ask you, if you can hear and try to train yourself to hear where there is pitch change and then mark it. And then again, record. So always mark first and then record and compare next. In some cases, there'll be some dialogues and it'll ask you to identify if you hear a rising or falling intonation on the speaker's uh, dialogue. Um, here's uh, another exercise, uh, for example, called incomplete lists. And you will hear uh, pitch change. For example, if I say um, there are students, some students from Vietnam, France, Cuba, that's incomplete because my, my voice is going up. Aren't you re you're still waiting for me to, to come down, right? So if I keep going up and up and up, that's an incomplete list. And China, da da da, then I went down. Then you know that one's complete. All right, so when you read it on paper, there's no difference. But when you speak it, there's difference in the music. So we're trying to train you to hear that ear, to hear the difference in pitch by by sound. Linking is the section. Um, in any of the cases where you want to have more information, take a look at that icon with the I for information. That is your support button. So any on any topic on any screen, you'll see that you can type you can touch that to get information about that particular topic. Again, there's a, a mark and record where you play the video and click between the words that are linked. You know, you hear a linking between these, and then after you've got it, you can um, do your recording by clicking the microphone button at the bottom. Okay, so when you click on the support button, a little yellow um, uh, paragraph will come up to explain what that's all about. Another exercise is called predicting, and that means before the speaker says something, what do you think they will do? Where do you think the speaker will link? Because now that you've learned some concepts about it, now if you were speaking, you have to think about it in advance. So guess what's going to happen? So that's what the predicting one is. Fast speech. Fast speech means a lot of times when we speak fast, we make some reductions in the way we speak. For example, if I say, I'm going to tell you how to do something. I said going to. I didn't say going to. So that's kind of reduction. But when you're typing something out, you should write, I am going, I am going to tell you, right? But in spoken English, I'm going to tell you. So you might hear that, I'm going to tell you, and then you have to type out what is the written form to show that you understand what the fast speech is. For sounds, maybe it'll be working on the sound, ah. Can you identify which words have the sound, ah? Or which words, what's, uh, which words have the sound, shh? It'll give you which sound to practice and listen for. Again, you're going to do the markup, play the video to click the words with the indicated sound in them. Sometimes there'll be some exercises for minimal hairs. So, 
Can you hear the difference between C and she? Click the one that you hear. Different sounds. Okay, so again, this will be looking at um, having, having you examine individual consonants and vowels, and you need to drag a word with a different vowel sound into the box. So there'll be a list of words, and you'll listen to them, and they'll just drag. So a lot of stuff here is drag and drop. Some things you type in, um, click and point to, to mark it, and then your recorder. In syllables, for markup, you play the video and click on the marked words and then click on the number of syllables. This word has two syllables. This word has four syllables. And uh, so those are the kind of exercises for syllables. Um, there's one called regular verbs. You know, for regular verbs, sometimes we add a syllable and sometimes we don't add a syllable to, uh, to a regular verb. So, for example, play. What's the past tense? Last past tense of play is played. So we don't add an extra syllable for that word. If we say work, what's the past tense? Worked. All right, so that's a, that word for that. If, if, if I want to say note and say past tense, then we say noted. So that adds another syllable. So this is, a, again, awareness of how many syllables there are in a word. Um, and this exercise has you um, focus on those. You can always see your student uh, progress report by clicking one of the, clicking the star on the uh, near the bottom left on your on your screen, it'll tell you what exercises you've completed and and your score. And of course, I can see everything. I can see uh, everything that you press in test. All right. So now let me take you to the actual software. And uh, when you get your login, you will be able to get there to do the same thing that I'm doing. Now, if you are going from my class and you want to do the shortcut. Then you can go to Resource tab, open Useful Links, and click on which one? Connected Speech Online? Right here. Okay, and it'll take you to this page where you're going to click on, uh, wait, it'll take you, I'll take you to the page where you have to log in. Okay, so when you log in, it's going to be on the right side, and you type in your login name over here. Yes, I, 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 you'll get an email about what exact date, but yeah, for the whole semester. Okay, so uh, it's telling me to wait because it's slow, but it's coming. I have this one loaded already. I'm just going to go over here. Okay, let's pretend I've already logged in and I'm, it's not on a slow network. You click start here. <coughs> Maybe not. Let's see. Oh, okay. Now it's behaving. So when you start in, uh, in Connected Speech, it'll come up with a new window for that particular software called Connected Speech. Can you think of any comments or questions you want to ask me while this is loading? I think you have a faster connection at home, right? To start the program, first click on the level button to choose a level to work at. Then, click on the person you would like to work with. Okay, she just told me what to do. So, I'm going to...
click on, what should I do, level one or level two? Level two. For, for a demo, what do you want me to do, level one or level two? Should I go to level two? Let's skip level one, that'll be too easy for you. Let's do level two. Okay, now watch me while I, I mouse over. I'm going to mouse over these people. Hi, my name is Guillermo. Hi, Guillermo. Hi, my name is Rita. Hi, Rita. Hi, I'm Alan. Hi, Alan. Hi, my name is Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Hi, my name is Becky. Hi, Becky. Hi, I'm Marie. Hi, Marie. Hello, I'm Lorraine. Hello, Lorraine. Hi, my name is Mary Michaels. Hi, Mary Michaels. Hello, I'm Jamila. Hello, Jamila. Okay, so those are the nine people who will be talking to us through this software. Who do you want me to pick? Pick somebody. Okay. Hi, I'm Alan. All right, let's go to Alan. So I'm going to click on Alan. And it's going to load Alan's video. Play the video and read the text. Okay. So then choose a module to work on. So I'm going to play without the text first to show you what happens. And in, I'll click the button, the play button. Let me share with you some key ideas about learning a foreign language. There are three ideas you need to keep in mind to be a successful language to learn. The first thing, and the most important thing, Okay, that kind of bothers me, so I'm, I'm going to pause it. Okay, so here we are out in the preschool classroom, so we don't have too much of a, not enough bandwidth to play that here very well. And I, I don't really want that to be your model. So I would like you to listen to Alan uh, at a faster, faster bandwidth, okay? Because he sounds a lot better than that, really. He does. Okay, now uh, here's the button that you click to get the text. Got that? And you see there's a scroll button here. And you can see the blue words are hot buttons. You can click that. And a, and a tag comes up telling you commercials means advertisement on TV or radio. Activities is over on the right side. So to do the language activity, questions. Read the question and drag the best answer into the box. OK, so here's the question. What is a detective? And here are four options. You choose one that you think is correct, and you drag it up to the box, like so. Okay? And then you check it, like this, and no. it turns red. Try again. So if it's red, I need to try again because I goofed. Well, I didn't listen to the lecture very carefully, or I didn't pay any attention. So it allows me to take, uh, take that away, just click on it, and then I choose another answer, and I check it. No. Watch the video and try again. Oh, yeah, I know I was supposed to watch the video. Ha! Huh. Didn't do it. Okay, suppose I do this. And I drag that in the box, and I check it. Excellent. Okay. Now, do you see what mode we're in? On the left side, what do you see here? Learn. Okay, so a learn, the learn mode allowed me to make some mistakes. Right? But when I'm finished with my learning, my practice, learn is like practice. Okay? Read the question and drag the best answer into the box. Now, it's, uh, when I clicked on the learn button, it turned to, it's a toggle, so it goes back and forth between learn and test. So notice that it says test now. So let's say I've done this practice enough and I'm ready to put my score and send it to the teacher. So I go to, to the uh, test and whatever I do here, that score will get put into my gradebook teacher can see it. And you can see it too. Okay, so if I choose this, what is a foreign language? What are you to choose? Any language that is not your first language or your mother tongue. Well done. Okay, so you see now at the bottom there are questions 1 of 10 and it says 100% correct because this one is for testing so that will be in there. So I hope you get all hundreds. Or something high like that. Do you like numbers that are high? I do too. Okay. So that's what happens when you do uh, the difference between the learn and the test. When you go to a new exercise, 
What's it going to come up? Learn or test? Drag the missing words into the gaps in the text. So do you notice that when I went to a new exercise, it started at learn. It always starts at learn. So this is one thing that some of my students forget to do. They said, I did it, I did it, I did. I said, well, I, I can't see anything. I don't see anything in the grade book. Well, that's because they might have done everything in the learn mode. Fine, but I can't see that. Okay, so here's an example of, of, of close. Drag each word into the correct gap. Okay, so what do you think I should put here? Secondly, you hmm, to think of yourself as a kind of language hmm, detective. Let's see, need, listen, that, which word do you think would fit here? Okay, so I can put this word need in there. Okay, so if I fill in this whole blank, then I'll get a check mark that I can check on. Right now, I'm, I'm, I haven't filled it in. So after I've done the learn, what do I need to do next? I need to do the test. Drag the missing words into the gaps in the text. So when it says test, don't, be, don't get mixed up between test and text. Right? Drag the missing word into the text, the text, in the test mode, the test mode, and then you'll get a score, and it also goes into... Now, I want to tell you that it goes into the gradebook that, that, that goes together with... Um, connected speech, and then I manually have to take everything out, and I have to manually put everything in Angel, because that's not part of Angel. So if you see your score come up here, and you say, why isn't it in Angel? Because me. I haven't done it yet. It's still sitting there on the server here, and I will access it at some point, and I will, you know, figure out everything and put in my Excel spreadsheet and whatnot, and then I'll put the scores into Angel. So that part is manual. But the part here will show up. Now, I haven't done any tests yet. So, I don't have any scores, right? I only did a few practices, but if I complete a test, then it'll tell the date, it, tell, it will say Alan, it'll say whatever exercise I did, and I'll tell the, the score, okay? I'll just close that. So all of that will come up. So all of your exercises are over on the right side, and they're basically the same in the principle that you want to start out with learn, which Click on the structure words the second speaker would stress. Okay, let's just try this one. Click on I the... I you found a snake just outside your house yesterday. Did you hear what he said? You want to play it again? Do you know what to do? Don't know what to do yet. Okay, so click on the structure word or words the second speaker would stress. Okay, so let's listen to that again. So here's that button. Play speaker one. I'm going to play it again by clicking. I heard you found a snake just outside your house yesterday. Okay, so the speaker two, oh, it was worse than that. The snake was in the house. No stress. So how should speaker two stress? Which word should the speaker two stress? Let's listen to that again. I heard you found a snake just outside your house yesterday. So what should speaker two stress? Speaker two to stress. Which word? Okay, some of you say they used to stress the word snake. Okay, how about this? In the first sentence, anything else? Worse? Okay, so this is allowing me. Oh, well, right down here, I see the, this one check mark. Okay, do you see the one check mark here? So that means find only one word in this whole utterance. That is the stressed word. All right. So do you think it's the word snake? Well, let's check it. No. Try again. Because if it were spoken like this, here's, look, this is a dialogue. If you do it according to that. I heard you found a snake just outside your house yesterday. Oh, it was worse than that. The snake was in the house. So that doesn't work out very well. Now we know it's red. So let's click on the red to erase that one. Which one? Should it, you want to try a different one? Worse. Okay, let's try worse. No. Try again. Okay, what does it sound like if we stress this word? Listen to me. I heard you found a snake just outside your house yesterday. Oh, it was worse than that. The snake was in the house. Okay, so the software and I don't agree that the word worse is the biggest stressed word. So let's erase it by clicking on it and try again. Wow. What do you want to try next? 
Yeah. House. I see here. I hear a lot of people say house. Let's try that. No. The speaker would probably stress the underlined words. Okay. Now, that was a mistake. Now, I want to tell you what it sounds like. If the speaker one says, I heard you found a snake outside uh, your house yesterday, and speaker says, oh, it was worse than that. The snake was in the house. That is not correct. It should be, I heard you found a snake just outside your house yesterday. Oh, it was worse than that. The snake was in the house. Ah, are you with me? Okay, do you need this class? Yes. yes. <laughs> see, these are all the secret things. You can see the words, you understand the words on the page, but you're not focusing, you're not hearing that. That's why you're here. You're here to learn how the shape of the language in its oral form is quite different than what it looks like on the written page. So if you really hear the difference, listen to it again, I'm going to say this first sentence, and speaker one. I heard you found a snake just outside your house yesterday, speaker two. Oh, it was worse than that. The snake was in the house. So in the house is in contrast to outside the house. You know, it's bad enough for a snake to be near your house, outside your house. It's worse when the snake is in your house. Got it? Okay, so don't worry if it takes you a while to figure it out to do the practice. You can do that learn, learn, learn. But later when you do test, you'll know the answer. Okay? Does that help you? You got an idea how to work through this connected speech? Good. Very good. Okay. Let's see what else we can do. You know how to use a book? Yeah, I think you know how to use books, right? Books are easy. Do you use books in most of your classes? Yeah.